Welcome to No Longer Conformed. I'm Eric Garthy, and we are in class with Ruth. Lessons on lasting relationships. In this session, we'll be looking at Ruth chapter 1, verse 22, down to chapter 2, verse 5. Our actions and God's providence. Providence means that God orchestrates his eternal plan. He shows favor according to his sovereign will, and sometimes he shows favor in direct response to right living. Let's read our passage, uh, beginning with uh, Ruth chapter 1, verse 22. So Naomi returned, and Ruth, the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law with her, who returned from the country of Moab, now they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. And then chapter 2, verse 1. There was a relative of Naomi's husband, a man of great wealth of the family of Elimelech. His name was Boaz. So Ruth the Moabitess said to Naomi, Please let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him in whose sight I may find favor. And, and she said to her, Go, my daughter. And she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. Now behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered, The Lord bless you. And then Boaz said to his servant who was in charge of the reapers, Whose young woman is this? One of the realities of the Christian life is very simple. Your obedience to God's plan opens his provision resources to your life. This passage highlights the intersection of our actions and God's providence. First, God directs his plan for our lives. Verse 22. You see, in our last section, we saw Naomi and Ruth begin their return to Israel from Moab. While Naomi's motive was questionable, that act positioned her for God to work in her life. Look at the events that God coordinated as Ruth and Naomi yielded to him. He moved at the right time. Verse 22, they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. God's timing was perfect. As widows, they needed the season of harvest to survive with gleaning rights and prepare food stores for the rest of the year. God moved in the right person. Chapter 2, verse 1. There was a relative of Naomi's husband. His name was Boaz. God intersected their lives with the one individual who could rescue them from their poverty. It was a godly relative named Boaz. God does this throughout Scripture. It was no coincidence that Philip met the Ethiopian eunuch in the desert. And then he moved in the right place. Chapter 2, verse 3. She happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz. Listen, nothing just happens with God. This was not some coincidence. It was providence. Remember Jesus and the Samaritan woman? Jews avoided Samaria. Yet in John chapter 4 and verse 4, it reads that Jesus needed to go through Samaria and was sitting at the well as the woman approached. And then he moved in the right way. Chapter 2, verse 5, Boaz asked, Whose young woman is this? It was common to see widows in the fields picking up the grain left behind by the harvester. It was a legal means of providing for them. But Ruth caught Boaz's eye and was attractive to him. You can't miss God's hand orchestrating this whole encounter. 
Daniel Block in the New American Commentary wrote, the passage is screaming, see the hand of God at work here. And then second, God prepares his provision in advance. Chapter 2, verse 1, again. There was a relative of Naomi's husband, a man of great wealth, of the family of Elimelech. His name was Boaz. If you have read the book of Ruth, you know that Boaz was going to marry Ruth. But think for a moment. What is the probability of him not being married already? Isn't it strange that this man was unmarried? Just consider what we know about Boaz, and it really is strange that he was unmarried. First, he was wealthy. I'm sure that fact would have prompted more than one scheming mother to gently push her daughter in his direction. Second, he was strong. In the Bible, names were usually given for a reason. Remember the descriptive names of Naomi's sons? Balon, sickly, and Chilion, wasting away. Well, the name Boaz means strength. His parents probably saw this as a physical characteristic at his birth. Third, he was a considerate employer. Chapter 2, verse 4. Now behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless you. When he greeted his harvesters, he blessed them, and they responded the same way. That exchange revealed a lot about the way he treated his employees. Then fourth, he was a man of faith. Chapter 2, verse, uh, verse 4. And verse 12. We saw in verse 4 that he used the Lord's name freely, with his employees. In verse 12, Boaz acknowledged God when he first spoke to Ruth. The Lord repay your work and a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel under whose wings you have come for refuge. Boaz was a synagogue going man. Boaz was Bethlehem's most eligible bachelor. He was quite a catch for any young Jewish woman. So why was he not married? And there's nothing in the text to indicate he was a widower. Why wasn't Boaz married? There's only one reason. God was saving him for Ruth. That's it. That's the only reason. Remember the reality. Your obedience to God's plan opens his provision resources to your life. And then third, God guides the path of the righteous. Look, we're going to look at verses, chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. Ruth demonstrated a life of obedience. And God used that obedience to give her his best. Notice the steps that she took with the Lord's guidance. First, she trusted the Lord, chapter 1, verse 16. But Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. What if she had rejected God back in Moab? What if she trusted God but stayed in Moab? So she trusted the Lord. Second, she was patient. Chapter 1, verse 22. So Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law with her, who returned from the country of Moab. Now they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. She had no idea what God had planned for her. She simply took the step of obedience at the moment. And then third, she was diligent. Chapter 2, verse 2. So Ruth the Moabite just said to Naomi, Please let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him in whose sight I may find favor. 
and she said to her, Go, my daughter. No one told her to care for her mother-in-law. She just took the initiative to provide for Naomi. And then fourth, she was sensitive to God's leading. Chapter 2, verse 3. When she left, then she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. Many questions come to mind about her search for food. Was this the first field she came to? Did others run her off? Did she consider a fork in the road that might have taken her elsewhere? We don't know the answer to those questions. All we know is that God led her to the right field and she went. This was a divine appointment. The same God that brought shepherds to a specific stable in Bethlehem and magi to a specific house in Bethlehem brought Ruth to a specific field in Bethlehem. And verse 5 tells how God was about to work in Boaz's life. Then Boaz said to his servant who was in charge of the reapers, whose young woman is this? Ruth didn't go looking for a husband. She was looking for food. Boaz wasn't looking for a wife. He was just checking on his crop. But God planned to bless them in ways that they never imagined. He blessed with an unexpected provision. God provided not only for the physical needs of Ruth and Naomi, but he was about to bless them far beyond any expectations. And God intended to give Boaz a family to share his life with. He blessed them with an unseen presence. Throughout this story, you cannot miss the presence of God. But we often don't recognize his fellowship and guidance until some time passes. It's when we look back at events that we realize God had to be with us. He also blessed them with an unlimited power. What can we accomplish if God is with us? Well, whatever God wants us to. The hard part for us is discerning what is God's purpose. That's why we have to walk by faith. We have to walk in faith trusting that our obedience to God's plan opens his provision resources to our lives. You think of that, and you have a great day.